Good. What are they, Bailey? Beta. Beta. On your whiteboard, please tell me. Um, what do we call the stage that we dream in? What stage do we dream in? Good. Good. Joshua. R.E.M. On your whiteboard, please tell me. While I am lying on my couch trying to stay awake and watch crappy football, what brain waves am I emitting? I'm kind of asleep, but I'm kind of awake. My husband gets real cranky. What is it, Margo? Theta, on your whiteboard, please tell me what is the deepest of your brain waves? Very slow and low. Good. What is it, Isabella? Delta, on your whiteboard, please tell me, last night when I twitched so bad that I scared the crap out of myself and yelped and then yelled, sleep, ah, damn it, what was I doing, what happened to me, what happened to me, Chris, and what stage of sleep was I in, uh, Bailey, stage two, stage two. alright, so that's what we covered on a Friday, Beta waves are happening while you're awake right now and while you're dreaming because your brain is completely active. All right, so consciousness, we got to alter consciousness. So, circadian rhythm is where we left off. I would fill this in on your study guide, by the way. It's just faster, and I want to make sure I get the room. So, your circadian rhythm is your cycle of bodily rhythm that occurs over a 24 hour period. This is like your normal waking, all right? If you didn't, did we get to this? Yes. Okay, so like on normally, I wake up at like 10 45. If I'm left to my own devices, I don't have a puppy and I don't have a husband who wants to hang out, I get to sleep till 10.45 without a problem. I need to eat by noon. Like, if I don't eat by noon, I am raging because I'm just getting hungry. And then I have to eat dinner before 7.30. Like, anything after 7.30 is just way too late for me. I'm just starving, okay? So that's my normal pattern. That's my circadian rhythm. That's what makes me happy. While I was in California, time, uh, what's that called when you're delayed? Jet lag. What, jet lag. Jet lag is, uh, occurs, and that would be my example, thank you very much. Jet lag occurs because you mess with your circadian rhythm. When I went to California, I kept normal time. I stayed on East Coast time, not West Coast time. I was waking up every morning at like 5 o'clock, like 4 o'clock California time to be at 8, 8 a.m., um, East Coast time. Okay, I went to bed, like I left this beautiful wedding at the Four Seasons, open bar, the most beautiful wedding I've ever been, at 10 o'clock, because I wanted to be in bed because it was already too late. <laughs> okay, I stayed on East Coast time, so my circadian rhythm, which is why I didn't really have any uh, uh, side effects from flying back, because my circadian rhythm was intact. Okay, so circadian rhythm. Okay, now your hypothalamus is going to be the one that's going to have the most impact on your a sleep pattern, okay? Um, it's your, uh, it's your hypothalamus that regulates your sleep. It's also going to be your have melatonin and all that stuff. All right, so micro sleeps. Now, micro sleeps, are they on there? Micro sleeps are brief side steps into sleep lasting only a few seconds, okay? Now, please listen. A micro sleep is when you stare off into space and your brain kind of shuts off for a second, and then you kind of like shake it off, yes? Happens to me all the time, okay? It's not a bad thing. Um, it's just like when you're in class and you're super bored and you kind of just like stare off, you're not thinking of anything. Like your brain just kind of goes off, and then you literally like shake your head awake. Like, oh my God, okay, here we go. How does that happen to you? Those are called micro sleeps. Um, it's just, especially when you're exhausted, it kind of happens, or when you have a lot going on, you kind of do that. Sleep deprivation is any significant loss of sleep resulting in problems of concentration and irritability. Now, when we talk about, um, you could do effects of sleep deprivation. That is when your body does not get into REM sleep enough or has very limited amounts of REM sleep because you're not sleeping that much. Most, how it's going to affect you, um, it can cause depression. It is, can cause death if extreme enough, okay? Um, it will uh, affect your appetite as well as affects your ability to concentrate and focus. Have you guys ever been stayed up way too late one night doing a project or homework and then you're completely useless the next day? Yeah. It takes you a couple nights to recover, especially if you have school going on. Okay, that is sleep deprivation. Obviously, obviously uh, you're not going to be killing yourself if you don't sleep for one day. 
Okay, it's like two weeks I think you can go without sleep and then you, your brain just shuts off. You just die because your brain can't recharge and clear itself, so it's going to eventually will kill you. A necessity of sleep, every single animal sleeps just like we need to sleep. They need to recharge, we need to recharge. That is the why we have sleep waves and sleep stages so we can come in and out. Just like a lion, if a lion is sleeping and he's staying in beta stage, I mean in delta stage, how easy is it going to be to be eaten? Very, very easy. So that's why we come in and out. Um, different animals require different amounts of sleep. I know I require way more sleep than my husband does. Okay? If I don't get my sleep, I am really cranky. Not that you would ever believe that I could be cranky, but I can't. Okay? My husband requires minimal sleep. Okay? Who here requires minimal sleep? Like, you just don't need that much. Who here requires all the sleep in the world to function? That is me. Ugh. High functioning people. What's wrong with you two? Okay, so necessity of sleep, the adaptive theory. That should be on there, is it not? Okay, I would write this down, by the way. So you have that extra sheet of paper I gave you yesterday with your on Friday with your cycles on it. I would write this down. Your adaptive theory is a theory of sleep proposing that animals and humans evolve sleeping patterns to avoid predators. That's exactly what we talked about with the going in and out, is your adaptive theory. Because if we just stayed in Delta, okay, we would be picked off really easily, okay, and we wouldn't have ancestors because we wouldn't be here. This is your one of your very few sleep uh, theories. Okay, so the adaptive theory is saying that if we didn't go in and out of our uh, sleeping, our sleep stages, then in fact we would be wiped out, which I think is true. Okay, especially like people who are really hard sleepers. Come on now. They wouldn't have made it beyond the fires. They're so super happy. Oh my god. Sorry. I'm just getting jealous. Alright, ready? I don't know if there's one more. Okay. Then you have your restorative theory. Is that on there? No. It's because I poked one on drugs anyway. All right, so your restorative theory, you need both of these. So wherever you need to put them is where you need to put them. It's a theory of sleep proposing that sleep is necessary to the physical health and body and serves to replenish chemicals <coughs> and repair. Ugh, I hate this thing so much. It's so annoying. The moment I click out of it, it's going to come right back. See? I hate it. I know I should. No, because I need it, because, like, this is my, like, real laptop, so at home and stuff, it's just annoying. Okay, so, your adaptive says that we go in and out in order to protect ourselves, right, Brooke? Then your restorative believes that it is a physical health of the body starts to replenish chemicals, okay? So they do kind of work together, they're not opposing one another, okay? Adaptive theory <laughs> means that we have the different stages in order to protect ourselves. Well, restorative believes the reason why we sleep, um, not how we sleep. So they don't oppose each other. Make sure you know that. I think they're pretty reasonable, both of them, don't you think? Because there's some theories that I have to teach you because they're going to be on the AP exam that I just wholeheartedly do not believe. I just think they're total crap. And it doesn't make sense. However, I think these are pretty reasonable. All right, here we go. Okay, so brainwave patterns. Brainwaves are picked up by EEG machines, which we've talked about in uh, week two. Those should be on there, are they not? They are. Thank you. That's oh, where? On your focus? Just that again. On your side, it's right under my nose. Thanks, On the front page. Oh, okay. It's um, alpha waves, delta waves, and all that stuff right next to it. EEG. Now, your EEG is the one that picks up the brain waves. So when we were drawing little squiggles on our paper yesterday, or on uh, Friday, that is what the EEG machine picks up. And after looking at the wavelength, people who study sleep patterns can tell exactly what type of waves you're in based on the amount of the peak to crest. Yes, Hunter? Uh, how do they test? Do they just put one of those things on someone and let them go to sleep? Yeah, absolutely. There's sleep uh, universities all around. Yes. I, I think I've been to Really? Yeah, they like put things all over my head mm -hmm. and told me to fall asleep. Yeah, then you've done that before. Yeah, it's exactly it. And then you just fall asleep <laughs> and it can tell you so much. You can learn a lot. 
Each of us have weird things about our sleep, just like our personalities. Each of us are a little bit weird in our own way, unique. Um, our sleep is nothing different. They can kind of pick out what type of stressors affect you and stuff like that. And they can kind of pick out, they're called sleep universities. And you, like you can go and people study the way people sleep and behave and act at night in order to, prove data, in order to help people get more restorative sleep, which is pretty cool. Like if you have the time and the money, I would go to one because they'll tell you exactly what you need in order to get better sleep. Better sleep means better life. I don't know about you. When I get good at night sleep, I'm like, I can take the world. Yes, Marie. What would cause sleep um, no, apnea? apnea? Apnea, it's a blocking. I'm getting there today. I'm, I'm charging right along. Okay, so your alpha waves, the brain waves are relaxing or relaxing or sleep. Theta waves indicating early stages of sleep. Delta, can I fly through this? Because I already did this. Can I, is that okay? Okay, because you have it because we need to get to the other ones. All right, REM is your stage of sleep. What? Was he not here yet on Friday? Oh, it's all on your little sheet, man. All right, so stages. We have all these. All right. REM, paradoxical sleep. Next to REM on your uh, study guide, I would write paradoxical <laughs> sleep. Okay? If you're sleeping, which means you're, you know, lying out, doing nothing. However, your brain is the most active, and that's why they call it the paradoxical sleep. <coughs> if waking during REM, you almost always report a dream. So if someone wakes you up and you're like, oh my god, I was just kissing Orlando Bloom, damn you. You are in REM sleep. Okay? So REM rebound. Okay? I would write this down, by the way. REM rebound. Okay, so say, for instance, my sophomores, they had a chemistry project today. They had to, they got a, an element. Oh, yeah. So we're all suffering. We all have suffered through this. So it's due today. So all my sophomores literally stayed up. Apparently it takes way longer than it should to do. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. So if you do a good job. Huh? If you do a good job, it takes way too long. Yeah. And it's, uh, they say that they've already studied all of the elements, and this project is, like, after you're done. Anyway, so they're cranky today. So, last night, they all stayed up super late to get these projects done, okay? So tonight, they're going to have REM rebound. Because they didn't get that much sleep last night, they are going to be in REM much longer, and much more consistently than they will if they had a normal night's sleep. Your brain requires a certain amount of REM sleep. Remember? Excuse me. Remember, your brain requires to be cleaned up and all that stuff. Okay? With that being said, your brain needs it. Okay? So, what happens is your brain will literally go in. Have you ever had a night that you literally just, like, you were so exhausted, you literally just lied there and just died? No. Okay? If you are, have, like, a project or, like, you're up super, super late, okay, you just didn't sleep well the night before and you're just, like, completely dead, you're an REM rebound. Okay? It's when you have more amounts of REM sleep, and it's so much that your body just lays in comp complete paralysis and just, like, literally dead. Okay? That is REM rebound. It's a way for your body to catch up. Uh, REM behavior disorder is when um, your muscle fails, allowing the person to thrash around and even get up and act out of nightmares and stuff like that. It's very strange. It's not sleepwalking. They're like, if they're dreaming, I'm a knight from the Middle Ages, and there are, you know, samurai here, they're going to, like, fight, and they're going to be, like, the dashing, trying to save the princess and all that crap. Okay, that is a real disorder. If you have symbolism, which is sleepwalking, sleepwalking and REM behavior disorder are not the same thing. But how much fun would it be to know someone who has it, not for you to have it? Actually, it wouldn't be fun. That's really dangerous, okay? But REM behavior disorders when they act out their stuff. All right, so sleepwalking is uh, symbolism, okay? You need to know the word, what it is by symbolism, not by sleepwalking or an AP. Symbolism occurs during deep sleep. So if it's in deep sleep, what stage? Four. Four, it's your delta waves. An episode of moving around or walking in one sleep. So my brother wakes has woken up a couple times to make peanut butter and jelly sandwich when we were younger. Okay, that's sleepwalking. Okay, he's not acting out a dream. 
okay? He doesn't believe he's a secret agent. I have no idea what my brother dreams about, but, you know, that would be a disorder. If you're doing normal behaviors, you're just asleep while doing it, it's called sleepwalking. Um, apparently, uh, my sister's roommate in college used to get up in the middle of the night and do laundry. How <laughs> effective! <laughs> How cool is that? You just wake up and you're I know, and she'd have no recollection. And my sister's like, you literally did it at 2 o'clock this morning. And she's like, oh my god, no I didn't. My sister's like, I didn't do it for you. <laughs> and then one day she actually like recorded a video of her waking up and doing laundry at like, 2 o'clock in the morning and said, this is it. Margo. Of course, Barry. Yes. Would this like affect their sleep? Like, would they get? Um, they are going to. Um, they're not restful sleepers. If you have somnolism, you're not a great sleeper, which means you don't get a ton of REM, but you're still like sleeping. Does that make sense? Um, typically, when you have a great sleeper, who here is a good sleeper? Like you wake up. Ugh. Okay, they're not going to have somnolism. It's the rest of us who aren't great sleepers who could have a somnolism. And you may go through fits of somnolism. It doesn't mean you have to have it your whole life. Anyone here ever walked, slept, walked at all? Okay, you may do it, and you kind of grow out of it. Most people do. Um, some people will continue their whole lives, but most people kind of grow out of it. Um, people can fall into it by being super, super stressed. Like, there was one night, I think, McCray was sleepwalking, and he was just sitting at his computer working, one of his first busy seasons. Like, he wasn't really doing anything. He was just, like, out of his computer. And I was like, it's time for bed. And he's like, no, I have to work. It's time for bed. And he's like, okay. And then went to bed. So, I mean, it's usually during high-stress times. People who are more likely to do it could do it, but you don't have to consistently do it. Yes? So, like, are your eyes open? Yeah, your eyes are open, and you're kind of you can have basic conversation. You're not gonna, like, fall on the no, you can. You can. Your coordination is not great. Your eyes are open, and you're kind of. It's just like, have you ever like daydreamed, and like people are talking to you, and you've never, you can't like, you don't hear it, but you know it's happening, and you're kind of like, what? And then like all of a sudden you kind of pull through. That's kind of what it is to a degree. Aaron. There you go. See? You just wanted to be downstairs on the couch. That's nice. That would scare me so, so bad. Because so I've nice. seen way too many horror movies. <laughs> See, there you go. Stop no, watching horror movies. Bailey. So, when you, when you sleepwalk and you're talking, can you, like, understand the person? Or is it to like a degree. It's serious? like, it's kind of like if someone, not that you know uh, what it's like, but it's like dealing with drunk people. <laughs> you're just kind of like, okay... You're just kind of guiding them back. You do not wake them up, though. It's really, really dangerous to wake them up because they're not in where they think they are in their heads. Okay? What do you got? Okay, so my brother, he's humped in his sleep. Is this related? Hums in his sleep? Yeah. No, I'm like, I'm not, it'll be like 10 o'clock at night, and I'll like, be like, walk past his wall, and I'll hear him legit hum because he goes to bed like really early because he has medicine. He's like, like, he takes his medicine at like 8, and it makes him fall asleep, and like, I'll hear him humming. Is that related to this? Not symbolism, no. I don't know what that would be. What mean. about people who are sleeping? Sleepy? Like, my kind of people. That would technically fall under symbolism. Yeah. Because they have to get up and go get it. It's not like they have a jar full of cookies. Because I would have eaten a jar full of cookies before I fell asleep, so I can enjoy every <laughs> night. What do you got? Um, the sleep paralysis be kind of like... Um, it's when you're in REM. When you're having a dream, you don't really move. But we're getting that in my next slide is that. Okay, so the next thing that we need to discuss is night terrors. Night terrors are universal. Next to night terrors on your little sheet, write no story line. There is no storyline to night terrors. An example, and I would write this in, in your example box. Falling. Okay? Uh, falling is the most common one. Um, being naked, just like naked in front of people is also, these are universal. Everyone has these dreams at some point. They, people grow out of night terrors. When you were a little kid, you had night terrors. That sense of falling, all those different types of things. There's no storyline. Think back, have you ever just had that feeling of falling and you wake up in a straight up panic? Like, there's, you, you weren't pushed out the window, you weren't jumping out of a plane, it's just like all of a sudden, and you're falling. Isn't that like your brain picture, like, you're falling so fast and your brain picture? No. 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 Yes. Would that be like, 
for being chased. No, that's a story. Okay, that's, that's a nightmare. Okay, night terrors affect every single person on earth. They are not cultural. They are universal. Okay, every person on earth, whether you're in the middle of Indonesia, whether you're in the middle of Hong Kong, whether you're in America, everyone has a night terror once in their life, at least, of falling. Universal. It, you, it happens in four, stage four sleep, delta waves. You do need to know that. If I'm telling you this specific, you need it. Nightmares. Nightmares are storylines. Freddy Krueger's coming to eat you. Um, your mother has showed up to school buck naked to walk you into class and all of your friends and make fun of you for the rest. Whatever your nightmares are, whatever they are, okay, that is an REM sleep. Okay? If there is a storyline, it has to be in your dreams. If it has to be in your dreams, then it's a nightmare. Do we see the difference between the two? Night terrors are sensations, not stories. Nightmares are stories with no sensations. However, I have woken up from a nightmare and was crying. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, yes. Yeah, if you're going to be shot, you're in REM, which means it's a nightmare. Okay, all of a sudden, you're Kim Kardashian in her Paris hotel room, and there's a knock at the door, and it's two police officers, and then all of a sudden, you're held at gunpoint. Okay, if you have that dream tonight, and they steal $10 million of jewelry. You like a bodyguard, right? Well, it's 2 a.m. Yeah. Paris time when it happens. But also, she just let her butt kiss by a guy, and they, like, stepped up her security. Yeah. So, I don't know, but her engagement ring was stolen. Yeah, we're just crazy. Oh, that big one, yeah. So no, yeah, it. I mean, they were probably... take it off when she goes to bed then? Probably. I take mine off to go to bed. I'm sleeping mine. Like and mine's like nowhere near... I mean, it's pretty close to Kim Kardashian's <laughs> eyes, but, you know. Anyway, okay. Well, I'm crying. Huh? Don't take my butt. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is wrong with you, Carly? All right, so... I'm really delusional today, because I have, like, no sleep. So you're, an R so you're going to have an I'm REM rebound tonight? It's school, so just shut up today. Oh, why are you here? Because your class and everything else. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, happy Rosh Hashanah. Thank I don't know you. if that's a phrase, but... It's Shana Tova. Yeah, that's not coming out. <laughs> <laughs> happy Rosh Hashanah. <laughs> All right, it's also National Mean Girls Day. It's October, it's October 3rd. Why is that a what day is day? All right. Yeah. On your whiteboard, here you go. On your whiteboard, please tell me, what am I describing? So, on Saturday night, I slept horrible, absolutely terrible. Last night, I slept like a boss, just completely dead. Even though my man wanted to wake up at 2, I got him up, we went for a walk, and I slept on the couch like a boss. What is it, Hunter? REM rebound. REM rebound. On your whiteboard, please tell me, I, I had, um... So I, my mom was harassing me, and then she drove me off a cliff. What am I experiencing? Good. Good. What is it, Brogan? Nightmare. On your whiteboard, what is the difference between a nightmare and a night terror? My mom. That's the difference. Good. Good. What is it? What is it? What do we got? Um, Aaron. Um, a nightmare has a storyline, and a nightmare has no storyline. There you go. Or a sensation. Storyline versus sensation is a good way to think of it. On your whiteboard, please tell me when I'm having a nightmare, what type of brain waves do I have? When I have a nightmare, what type of brain waves? REM's not a brain wave. Oh. No. What is it? What is it? Julian? Beta. Beta. Oh. If I'm having a night terror, what type of brain waves am I having? If I'm having a night terror, what type? What is it, Marie? Delta. Delta. On your whiteboard, if I'm experiencing a night terror, what stage of sleep am I in? Good, good. Chloe? Four. Four. If I'm experiencing a nightmare, what ti what stage of sleep am I in? Good. What is it? What is it? Um, Lily? Five, Ariana. There you go. On your whiteboard, please tell me, what is it called 
when Erin had a sleepover, but she went downstairs and sat on the couch and just waited, I assume? I just woke up there. Like sitting? And you just woke up? I, yeah, just sitting and I woke up. Can we just call it zombieism? What is it, Miles? Zombieism. There you go. All right. So sleepwalking, it's a famous thing. Uh, some guy kills himself. All right, here we go. This is what you want to do. Kills, kills someone under the pretense of sleepwalking. And guess what you still want to do? So you can say, oh, my God, I was sleepwalking when I did it. All right, here we go. So problems during sleep. Insomnia is the inability to get to sleep, stay asleep, or get good quality of sleep. Um, today, here in America in 2016, they estimate one in six adults have insomnia, and that it's even rising in our children, which means Americans are not getting good sleep. Do you know what country gets the best sleep? Sweden. Sweden and Norway are two highest, followed behind Japan, but yeah. Japan follows third. Well, I'm sure they have like a bunch of like herbs. They drink tea. That's just like a really rigorous schedule all the time. Mm -hmm. What? In Japan, like you're always like you, you gotta do stuff at this time. It's you depends. Gotta sleep. You gotta get. Oh, yeah. Well, when I was in the city. That's all. Yeah, I, I just saw the ranking. Like so we didn't know where I checked it. Doesn't have like two hours of school. Yeah, they don't have two hours of school. Yeah, it's like it, four hours. Yeah. Well, okay. still, <laughs> so, that's not what we do. It is that. Like, that's, that's why they get good sleep. Probably, and they don't have homework. We should push. And yeah, they also don't test as much. So if I just decide not to give you homework and still held you accountable to the same test, how well do you think you're going to do? Good. Because we, we do good because we get better sleep. Well, there must yes. be some good. Huh? why the sweetest well, do. <laughs> <laughs> just shy yourself this on that argument. Maybe class. we should spend more time in English. <laughs> All right, here we go. So insomnia. Uh, my dad has insomnia. My sister has insomnia. I'm not a great sleeper, but I definitely don't have insomnia. Uh, insomnia is when you just can't sleep. Like, you just go, go, go. Most people who have insomnia are on medication. Anyone here know someone who has insomnia? There you go. It's very, very common. You all know someone who has insomnia. You just don't know they have insomnia. Okay? Um, it's just when you can't sleep. Sleep apnea, which is where you were getting... Uh, sleep apnea is a disorder in which the person stops breathing for nearly half a minute or more. I have a video for you. It's like 30 seconds. It's really not crazy. Um, and finally, you have uh, narcolepsy, which I'm going to show you a video for uh, sleep apnea. Cancel, 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 cancel. <coughs> Where is it? What if you have a dream that you like went underwater, so then you actually wake up and then you wake up and you answer it? I'm sorry, I wasn't listening. <laughs> <laughs> like if you have a dream that you like went underwater, so you hold your breath, and then you wake up because you were holding your breath. Um, that's just, uh, it's a nightmare. That's all. I don't know why it's not here. I will figure it out. I'll probably have free they tomorrow. Have for sleep apnea? They do. They have breathing machines. I don't know why it's not there. Very cool. All right. So what happens? I'm just going to do a drawing. You're lucky ducks. All right. So when your okay. So here is your nose, your head. Here's your throat. <laughs> Why do your head always look like that? That's who I am as a person. <laughs> Alright, so. Okay, so sleep apnea. <coughs> okay, so here is his tongue. Okay, your tongue, when you're upright, is sitting right in that little. Take your tongue right now and just roll it around uh, uh, inside your teeth. See how it has a nice little crevice right there? And you can just rest really nice. Now you're all doing it. You're all like, mm -hmm. Okay, it has a nice little place to rest, correct? You can take a nice big breath without a problem. It's out of your way, correct? Okay, so this is, um, this is standing. Okay? <laughs> 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 but 
you? Is this, are we done? Yeah. Okay, what happens is when you're lying back, like lying back, your tongue cuts off your air supply. If you have a really long tongue, you typically have sleep apnea. Or if your air canal or your throat is narrower than most, you typically have it. So, fun fact. Chris Presser, you've been in my class for two years now, and that has never been okay. I know, I thought I was stuck with You're not. You're Chris Presser. Don't do it again. Thank you. Thank you, darling. We covered a lot today. That's exciting. So tomorrow I serve drugs. Yeah. We gotta get to drugs. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's funny you mentioned that, that project for uh, chemistry because last year I, I mean, there was like a baseball tournament we were playing and I didn't get home until I had a game like every day and I was up to two doing it. And I got an A on it, but I ended up getting sick for three days. It kind of like a migraine. Everything, every movement hurt. I got like a. That's you. Okay, nothing about that. I have never seen it because it's not what I do. Now you know exactly what they mean. Yeah. I'm here every day. I'm here every day. Okay. Yeah. 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 Sleep. Oh, that's yeah. You know, um, you know how on Thursday I came in here to make. You see my little man? Is he not the cutest thing you've ever seen? Oh, it's actually really cute. He's so cute. Can I take the photo of the dude from Friday? Yeah, hold on, quick. What's his name? Toby. Oh, Toby. Here, right here, sweetie. So you know how on Friday I came in here to make up that test, right? Yeah. So I was listening in on your teaching for psychology. Way more interesting, correct? Honestly, I went home and I actually, because someone was talking about sleeping, and I was like, oh, that's a level, you know, whatever you were talking about. There yeah. you go. See? Way more interesting. Than this, yes. Way more. Way more usable, too. <laughs> no one asked you about, oh my god, the Sultanate of Delhi. Oh, well, you you done done me in your bed, I felt it. I tried to beat you, but you're so hot that I melted. I fell right through the cracks. Now I'm trying to get back. Before the cool done run out, I'll be giving it my bestest. And nothing's gonna stop me but divine.